Well, hello, this is Peter Combs for Bitemout.com, Bitemoutlive.com, and P.O. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is July 2nd, uh, 2021. Fourth of July is coming up. I hope you all got something planned out there to do. Cook out, barbecue, go to the beach, go sailing, mountain climbing, whatever it is you're doing. I hope you do it. And uh, this is uh, the weekly video. We're going to take a look and see what's been going on over on uh, uh, Invaluable and Live Auctioneers and on eBay, Katawiki, on our own site, bitemoutlive.com, and, and all the usual news and go over and see what prices were, see what's going on. It's sort of an interesting week, and there's some interesting sales coming up. Uh, I noticed that on, on, on the Live Auctioneers Invaluable, there was a little bit of a lull there, and now things are coming back, and uh, there's a very good rug auction coming up. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Um, uh, the, the, those of you that are interested in Chinese rugs and textiles and Central Asian, Turkmen and stuff, there's a nice looking sale coming up for that, as well as uh, some other stuff. So let's get started in, let's, let's just get started. All right, now, let's see here, click through here. Uh, what are we going to start with? Oh, we're going to start with this. The uh, Veritas auction, this was uh, being featured on Invaluable, uh, ended this week. It was, a, it was a very nice sale, primarily of Chinese export goods of the 18th century. Some really good examples, some very nice Famille Rose examples and so forth. Uh, Veritas used to sell on both live auctioneers and on Invaluable. And for the last five or six years, I don't know if any of you have noticed, they no longer sell on live auctioneers. Uh, they do it strictly through Invaluable, so we, we, we have to keep track with them over there. The only thing that's disappointing is, is that once the sales are done, you can't enlarge the pictures anymore to talk about them too much. The, this is about as big as they let you get them. If you click on this, it just pulls it over into this little box here. And yeah, Okay, this one enlarged. Sometimes they don't enlarge for us. This was one of the pieces I thought was rather nice, was this nice big Famille Rose uh, 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 basin with mass candles on the end, fish interior, and all that good stuff. Stuff. Nice looking piece of porcelain. Uh, the, they, they give you this item overview business down here in the corner, chin lung period and so forth. And this wasn't an enormous one. This one was um, uh, about, I don't know, about 18 inches or so. But uh, let's see, it brought, some of them get bigger. This one brought 8,000 uh, euros, which was about right. It was beautifully painted and uh, it did just fine. A number of the lots did pretty well uh, in the sale. But there was also some uh, very good silver and other things that went through it. And if, you, if, you, if you're a Chinese export collector, I'm sure you saw this sale. Uh, a few of the Grisai decorated pieces passed, so if you're a Grisai buyer, you might be able to call up the auction house post-sale and say, you know, would you take an offer? Always be willing to do that. That's a good way to buy inventory sometimes, especially if it's been a collection that's done very well overall and the, and the seller, just the family, the estate that's selling it doesn't want the stuff back. There's a couple of strays that didn't make whatever little reserve they had. Sometimes you can get a really good buy that way because they just want to finish it up and uh, you, know, you can offer you know, half the low reserve, half the low estimate and see what happens. All right, uh, we've done it and it's worked out rather well at times. Uh, so you know, you always, always do that with anything you see is past. If it looks interesting to you, send a note to the auction house. Uh, you know, it's just an email. Send them a note and saying, I noticed lot so and so didn't sell in the sale. Uh, can I? Would you? Would you be willing to accept an offer for it? And, uh, uh, and very often they're willing to take a, a good bit less than the uh, the low uh, than the reserve under the reserve because the, the as I said, the family doesn't want the stuff back. All right, they have to close out the estate for whatever reason. They just want to move on. Fine, get rid of it, get rid of it. All right, so keep that in mind. But overall, this, this sale did very, very well. Um, and uh, let's take a look what else. And then they also had this sale. They had a, a, another sale of uh, more uh, Chinese taste goods, a uh, nice Ming, Ming, uh, Ming jar here with a galloping horse on it. Uh, did pretty well, 3,500 euros. I like this. I thought this was quite attractive. Um, and you see, this one won't enlarge for us for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, it's, it's annoying. Some of the pictures enlarge, some of them don't. Um, let's see. No, you can't get that one to enlarge. But that was a nice looking jar with the, with the bird on it. 6,000 euros. I liked that. That was good looking. And they had some other pieces too. Nice looking uh, rose water bottle and uh, some uh, Japanese material thrown in at the end. 
uh, for the Japanese buyer, including a pretty good-looking Nambam chest. Nanban chest. You don't see them very often. These are the chests for the for the Westerners. Uh, Good-looking thing. Went for 5,000 euros. And that's a bargain for those. Because I remember when Nanban chests, not that long ago, were selling for 15, 20,000 pretty routinely. All right. Now, um, over here on uh, in the invaluable side, there's a bunch of stuff coming up right now. Uh, one of the things I wanted to point out was this, was this nice little um, uh, lacquer box. Somebody emailed me about this. I uh, wanted to know if I had seen it. This very nice Meiji period Shiba Yama Kodansu. Uh, beautiful example. Nice mother of pearl inlay on this thing. This is a nice old one. Good looking box. Well done. The brass, uh, all the bronze mounts look to be in good condition. It's got that sort of chagrin ground uh, bot, you know, on, on the uh, like shark skin, almost like shark skin texture around the body. My nice relief work, mother of pearl, all the way over. And uh, here's a good shot of the end with it. Uh, it's got the chrysanthemum knobs and uh, very attractive. Five to eight thousand, uh, three, uh, five to five hundred dollar, uh, five to five thousand dollar estimate, which is sort of vague, should bring should bring three to five thousand. It's a pretty good looking, pretty good looking box. The sale is in ten days, and this is at Akiba Antiques down in Dania, Dania Beach, Florida. Um, they have auctions off and on. Uh, nice looking thing, and uh, it's already got a few bids on it. it. Should do well. Good looking box, but if you're interested. You know, for heaven's sakes, leave a bid on it. I heard from somebody this week. I always joke about carpet bombing bids. You know, just leave bids everywhere. And I heard from one of our, our regular guys out west, out in Colorado, and he, he said he's had some pretty good luck doing that. Uh, he goes through and he just leaves bids on everything. And, uh, and then at the end, you go back and see if you got something. And, and surprising how often you do. I actually snared a piece um, not long ago at, at an auction in New York that way. Um, a very nice carving. I got it on the on the. Uh, I got it at a low low estimate, and I got it on the opening bid. And uh, I forgot. I actually forgotten that I'd left a bid on it, and I got a bill from a live auctioneer saying I bought something. I couldn't think of what it was because I never thought for a minute I'd get this thing, and uh, for the price I got it. So I was I was pretty amazed. It was a couple of hundred dollars for a really great carving. All right, now, uh, so leave bids, always leave bids. This is the auction of rugs I was talking about at the beginning. This is the Austrian Rug Company. They are very good with textiles. Uh, they're in, uh, what town are they in? I want to make sure I get the town right here. Um, Vienna, they are in Vienna. Um, and uh, they have, a, they have a, a tribal rug sale coming up with a lot of nice Turkoman pieces, a lot of fragments, interesting fragments, but a very, very early pieces, and some nice Chinese examples, some nice Chinese rugs um, and Putao rugs and so forth in there. Uh, hold on a second. Let's, let's hop over to the rugs. There they are. There's a good Ning Shai rug right here, this little runner here. Nice looking colors, soft pinks. Um, there it is. Th a three three panel section uh, and reasonably estimated eight to twelve hundred euros that's not bad for that it's already it's uh it's the opening bid is only 400 euros on that or about 474 dollars all right and then there's uh this rug this big peking rug this is very striking uh it's it's a it, 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 these peking rugs can be very dramatic looking and this one with the black border and then this chinese sort of fret design around the outside with vines going through it and then this very nice uh, red uh, patterned field with splashes of flowers in the corners and then in the center. Um, it's, it's, it's a very striking rug. It's a very has a very strong taste to it. But if that's the kind of rug you like, this is it. I believe it's a big one, too. It's like nine, yeah, eight by 11. I was going to say nine by 12. Um, and a very modest estimate, six to 900 euros. That's a lot of rug for, for six to 900 euros if you can get it in that price range. And, uh, and also they have, uh, let's see what else they've got in this sale here. We'll hop back here. I'm going to see it. There's a nice Putao uh, horse rug. If you like horses, I love horse rugs, uh, as many of you know. There's also some very nice Tibetan saddle pieces. Another blue, on, blue and white Putao rug on here. There's some good looking rugs. Nice Tibetan, another nice Tibetan rug up in here. And then, of course, you have more Turkmen things, these Osmoliks. They've got like, there's five or six Osmoliks in this sale. It's pretty amazing. And uh, lots of, lots of, lots of Gabas and all, all those interesting Persian pieces. More Osmoliks down here, more Turkmen pieces. So if you're a Central Asian textile fan, you, you like Chinese rugs, um, check out the Austro Austrian uh, rug company sale. 
Uh, it's coming up in a few weeks. You have plenty of time to uh, make arrangements. And as you know, small rugs are inexpensive to ship. Big rugs are expensive to ship, but small rugs aren't that bad. This sale is on August 14th, but I'm gonna, we're going to have it on the member pages because uh, I've heard from a number of you and you're interested in textiles. And uh, it's a slippery slope. You start collecting textiles, and uh, you, you, it's like it's like it's like getting addicted to collecting porcelain all over again. It's a whole other area of fascination. But this this auction house seems to have a good source of stuff because a lot of great rug collectors live in Austria and Germany. The, the Germans and the Austrians have been collecting top quality rugs in Italy, uh, in that region of the world, for a long time. Some very good collections, and I don't think they've begun to get tapped out. All right, now over here to this, this very nice pair of Ormolu-mounted 18th century Japanese Amari vases. These are very, really lovely with these over flower, oversized flowers on them, and these nice figures on the top. They almost look kakayamon, but a very nice quality, and I like the, uh, the mounts on it. I don't know if there's any other pictures. I think this is the only picture they give you. And this is Freeman's in Pennsylvania. The sale is in a little over a week and a half from now. Uh, but these are beautiful. Uh, one fifteen hundred to twenty five hundred dollar estimate. Very low estimate, and they are twenty four inches tall. These are not small. Call, get a condition report. They may have repairs to them, but boy, if they look like anything, this is like this in person. A fifteen hundred to twenty five hundred dollar estimate for a big pair of pots like that. If you're a Japanese buyer, it's a good buy. All right, and then moving along over to this, uh, Eldritch down on uh, Cape Cod has a sale coming up, and they handle a lot of Chinese stuff down there. But he's, they've gotten in a couple of particularly nice framed Chinese watercolors, early 18, 1800s, probably around 18, probably around 1800 straight up. Um, but this is a, a school of painting that they did in China at the time, extremely fine on paper. These are not on pith. These are on, often on Watto or English paper. Um, a lot of the, a lot of, I say Watto because a lot of, uh, if you take uh, some Chinese watercolors out of their frames and look at the paper up to light, they're watermarked by the, uh, Watto. Uh, I think that's the name of the company. And uh, um, anyway. This is one of them. Estimates reasonable, $700 to $1,000, $400 opening bid. And um, um, let's see, I think there's another one here too. Yeah, there's this one of uh, flowers and insects and butterflies and so forth. Also very nice. Um, is, is, they mentioned the, wa the water paper, the paper. No, they don't. But at any rate, it's probably English watermark, watermarked paper. Uh, but beautifully done. Uh, th this picture, if, if, if you give you some idea, that frame probably cost around four or five hundred dollars. It's 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 a French mat, double matted, with nice gilt on it, and uh, there it is, all ready to go. And uh, so if you like if you like uh, watercolors, you want to check those out. This out, the uh, site size of the of the painting itself. Each, each sheet of the paintings are 16 by 13, so these are big. These aren't small paintings, and, uh, and the, the painting size overall is 28 by th 23. So it's a good size uh, work of art, and they're both, I believe, the same size. So if, you, if you're interested in chi early Chinese export, but very fine quality, you want to uh, check that out. All right, and then also we've came up with this. This is a very interesting looking, again, export uh, teapot with paneled, paneled edges of a figural scene, sort of a standard figural scene, but the framing around it is quite unusual and these very exaggerated bamboo handles. I like a great deal, and they do this sort of, sort of like smoky marbleized effect on the handle of each side, and these, these are uh, very nice. Here's the ends, all right, and there's the other side of the pot and it looks to be in pretty good shape all the way around. I don't see any repairs up here. Often you have repairs around the, the openings of old teapots because the lid gets put down a little bit too hard sometimes. Uh, this one looks pretty good. Estimate is $1,500 to $2,000, but it's an unusual Chinlung period teapot, so um, I can understand the estimate. And this is uh, Tenmuku Auctions in Fairfield, New Jersey. Uh, they get things off and on. They, they sell some stuff that's questionable at times, but this, this is a nice looking teapot. And then also another big export piece. This is up in Maine at Thomaston Place. A guy named Kajavayu runs the place. Nice guy. I've known him for years. Uh, nice looking estate piece. Uh, beautiful export uh, vase done probably about 1770 or so, I would guess. Uh, looks to be in nice shape. Always get a condition report. But beautiful decoration on it. 
Here's the lid with the original Foo Lion. I like it. Nice looking thing. And uh, it's estimated at three to $5,000, and it is a good size one. It is 21 inches tall. As I recall, one of these came through. It was either on eBay or Live Auctioneers not that long ago, and it was about this size. And as I recall, I it may, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't it bring eight to $12,000 somewhere in there? So I think it's three to $5,000 estimate. It's very reasonable. It's a very, very pretty uh, pot. All right. Check that out. And then this, this sold last week, but I wanted to show you something about it. It was a very nice um, a Lang Yao uh, 18th century Mayping vase. Uh, it did very well. It brought over $10,000, but it, it did come out of a legitimate collection. Um, the auction house was, uh, this was the Adams Auction House in Dublin. This was that Dublin sale. There was a bit of press about the auction. Um, we had mentioned some of, the, some of the stuff that was going to be in it. It looked like a nice sale. But this was what was really interesting about that. They actually had the real provenance. We, we've made jokes before about some of the auction houses in the U.S. that fabricate their, uh, um, their, their, their uh, provenance and they make up labels and all the shenanigans that goes on. This, this isn't the case here. Um, this came from Senor Jorge Cesar's uh, 20th Century Collector. And here's the exhibition catalog of, of art, China and Japan that was done in Argentina in Buenos Aires in 1939. And there's the vase. They have the, the, this was in the possession of the, uh, the family who consigned this uh, to this sale. Here's a nice look to it. Nice dry uh, uh, glaze, nice looking glaze on it. Good looking, they took good pictures. And wait, you see this at the end. It's even got, there's a nice shot in hand. It's even got the old exhibition label on the back side of it that corresponds to the catalog. That's good provenance, okay? That's what you want to see. And it ended up selling for $11,843. All right, but a very nice Mayping base, very, very attractive. And it had an eight to 12,000 uh, 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 euro estimate, so they knew it was quite good. And um, their estimate was, was spot on. And as I said, this is Adams Auctioneers in Dublin. Uh, they do good sales. It's a good auction house. We've, looked, we've had their things on before. They do a nice job. All right, and we've talked about that already. And now we're going to mosey over and see what happened on Catawiki this week. Um, this was the, uh, the Clampets Bowl, uh, Clapbutts Bowl that sold um, ro chamber, uh, Romance of the Western Chamber. There's always interest in this bowl with this pattern. It's, it's always fascinating to me. They always, you always know they're probably going to sell. This one sold for 3,100 euros. But it was a nice example, and it looked to be in good shape, and it was marking period. There it is, all right, in good photographs. Here's a shot of the bottom. Here's a shot of the, the bowl by itself. I think they show another shot close up. There it is. But nicely done in a very powerful rim on it. The, ri the rim on the dish was very, the bowl was very, very strong. Flared out nicely. It looked good. And also this, this Japanese uh, bronze cash pot or water pot. Um, nice looking example. Very good patina. I love the, the, the tree and the, and the heron down here. And then this ascending bird. Just beautifully done. Great warm colors. Japanese bronzes, when they get the color right, boy, they really get the color right. And uh, notice how delicate the low relief work was all up through here. Uh, the, whoever cast this really knew what he was doing because he was able to do these very bold castings in some places. Very, very bold, very, very strong. And then you'll see in the minor areas it gets very delicate, very subtle, very thin, very controlled. Um, uh, very, very nice looking uh, bronze. And here's some bamboo stalks and so forth. And I think somebody got a heck of a nice buy. This went for only 360 euros. And I think that was an excellent buy. It was estimated at three to 400. But I, I kind of thought when I first saw this, it was so pretty, it may do better. But it, it, it went, I think, well within reason. And, um, and then, uh, let's see, that, that didn't sell. Well, that was something I wanted to mention was there were a number of lots that didn't sell on there. And this is sort of to the Katowiki sellers out there, if you're watching these videos, lighten up on the reserves. All right? You're not doing yourselves any favor. I, 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 I probably shouldn't even be saying that. But, but I've noticed lately that the reserves on some of the Chinese stuff at Katowiki have been getting higher and higher and unrealistic totally unrealistic in many, many cases. And, um, it, you know, I know you th a lot of sellers think they know what something is worth. The market will tell you what something is worth, all right? And, and I've noticed there's an increasing amount of buy-ins, um, uh, unsold lots at Katowiki on the Chinese stuff and on some Japanese stuff too, all right? Um, uh, uh, relax, relax, lighten up on, the, on, your, on, your, uh, on your reserves because all you're doing is creating dead inventory for yourself. 
All right, so it's, you know, just so chill out on that. All right, and then somebody put up this perfectly nice little um, bowl. Somebody joked about this because he called it Jai Jing Bowl Wan Li. And uh, somebody's quite correct, and, and I didn't even think of it at the time. The, the, the seller dated it for two periods. <laughs> I think he may have meant Jai Jing Tu Wan Li period or something like that because they are, uh, they are uh, uh, very close together. Uh, but the, to me, this is a Wan Li bowl uh, from what I could see of it. Doesn't look Jai Jing to me. That looks very, very Wan Li. Uh, but at any rate, it was a very nice little bowl. Very good. It was a provincial bowl. Nothing, nothing high hand, high minded about this. Just a nice, sweet little bowl. Nice looking base on it. And somebody picked it up for for a pretty reasonable price. It was estimated at four to five hundred euros, but they had obviously put a low estimate on it, a low reserve on it, and it went for two hundred and fifty um, uh, uh, euros, which is about right. Uh, you know, it could have brought three hundred, three fifty two if you have you know somebody that needs it and wants it for their collection, but the perfectly good price. And uh, it only had a handful of bids, so I, I think somebody may have just come along and tossed a bid on it, thinking they wouldn't get it, and they got it. All right, I have a feeling that's what happened. All right, and then over to this. This is something we sold this week. We had some robes that came out of a collection of an estate. We were selling for them. This was one of them. This was a very, very nice robe. I liked this a lot. I thought the needlework on it was really, really fine. It was a good thing to study. If, you, if, you, if you're looking at late Qing robes and you want to see what fine work they did, uh, here's a classic, including it's on a damask ground. Uh, all this work, damask work around here, but very nicely done. Lots of good gold thread work around the outside, creating the rondelle and so forth. And uh, here's the edge of it. it. had a little bit of a stain down in here. But these days with the textile cleaning silks, it's amazing what they can get out. Uh, they use these enzyme products and whatnot. At any rate, uh, it did pretty well. It ended up selling for uh, $3,688. And I think I had thought it would probably bring around three when it, we first put it up. But it did a little better. It did a little better. But it was a nice robe. It's been paid for and it's been shipped. All right, now over to this, the uh, Cafe Ole Famille Rose Bowl with a leaf pattern. It's a well-known type. If you've been collecting for a while, you've seen this before. I think some of this difference in color up here looks like reflection to me of some kind. But um, uh, nice looking uh, bowl. Yeah, it is reflection because there it is again. And, uh, but nice Famille Rose decoration, Young uh, Chin Lung period. Uh, very, very, very nicely done. And uh, I think somebody got a good buy on this. They picked this bowl up for uh, $260. And as I recall, it was around six or so inches in diameter, nice size, uh, very, very pretty and in good condition. And the interior was decorated in uh, underglazed blue, uh, very typical of these, uh, of these, these, these better examples. Um, let me see one thing, I want to double check something. Yeah, yeah, Chin Lung period. But at any rate, nice looking bowl. 260 bucks. I think that's a very, very reasonable price. Again, somebody got a good thing. And then this, the mirror. Um, the reverse painting on glass, rather. It is technically a mirror, I guess. This was something I mentioned last week because it was, it was you know, opening bid of 450 No interest in it. And I think it was because the seller had it listed as vintage or some sort of thing. This was older than that. I like this a lot. And I, I, I think a few of you caught my comment on it because by the next morning, I think it was up over $1,000. It jumped up overnight after we talked about it. And, and I understand why. I mean, it should have. And, and in the end, I think that whoever got it still got a good buy. This is the thing that's interesting is that it, it sort of languished for a while. Nobody bid on it. A lot of people looked at it. And they say, oh, I'm not going to save it. It doesn't have any bids. It doesn't have any interest. It isn't dated. It's that old. And they move on. And the, the sellers hurt themselves when they do that because they, they lose potential buyers. At any rate, um, it ended up selling for just $1,225, which I think is very reasonable. This was a big mirror uh, uh, painting room where it was 40, I think it was 47 inches tall. So a very nice size. Make a room. All right. And then over to this, Josh Chamberlain uh, Juice uh, 1499 had a sale that ended this week. This is a very nice looking transitional period uh, pot with faceted sides, uh, six sided pot, uh, nice, uh, uh, you know, acanthus leaves going off the bottom. Very typical of transitional where they have that sort of blurry business going on uh, with the cobalt under the glaze. There's the base, there's the interior. And there's the bottom, and that's what it should look like. You can still see some of the cloth marks from when they potted the thing up. And uh, there it is outside in the sun. Uh, oh, look, he t Josh took it outside of his office. I've been up there. I know where this is. So uh, at any rate, he's got a great place to shoot with a little garden out front when he wants to. And uh, it ended up selling for $2,718. Uh, very, very nice. It was a good-looking piece of ceramic, though. Good-looking piece of porcelain. 
And then over here to this, this seated Ming bronze uh, 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 a female figure, uh, maybe maybe it's supposed to be a Guan Yin or something, but it's a nice old one. It's Ming. Uh, it's got bits of wear, legitimate looking wear to it, lots of dirt. And this, I like this Lotus Rui affair around the neck. Uh, very attractive. And uh, this was, uh, oh, this was uh, uh, Guards the, the, the Limited, the, the guy in London that sells a lot of interesting small things. This went for $1,400, which I think was perfectly reasonable. Nice looking figure. And it was it was of a decent size, too. It wasn't tiny. It was uh, uh, almost a foot, yeah, it was a foot tall. It was a good size, decent size. And then he also had this up, this standard uh, standing court figure. Um, with the with the scepter, uh, very nicely done. Probably late Ming, from what I could see. The bottom of it sure looks late Ming. Uh, nice facial expression, good patina, and all that. And this went for uh, a little bit less than the other piece. Uh, it went for a thousand eighteen dollars, but I think it was a little bit smaller, wasn't it? Yeah, it was twenty six twenty six centimeters, or about eight inches in height. And uh, I like the seated figure a little bit better, but this was pretty nice too. This was a nice looking bronze, good looking thing. And then over here to, to the, uh, we had talked about this, the, uh, I think this was a ninth rank uh, badge or something, uh, but nicely done. Um, uh, and uh, beautiful ground in the, in the, in the, in the uh, decorations, the, the, the cobalt, the contrast, nice and sharp, very finely done uh, all the way around. Good, good looking piece of silk, nice bright color silk. The red still was strong, which means no, somebody didn't leave it sitting in a sunny window for five or 10 years at any point in its life, and it did fine. It brought $588, which I don't think was a, was a big price. I, I wouldn't have been surprised at all if this had brought seven or 800 because it was good and crisp, a nice looking, nice looking piece of silk. And then over here to this, this uh, uh, Chinese export for the Japanese market, uh, wear a piece uh, with a couple of buds running downside. Very, you know, sort of uh, uh, asymmetrical, very, very typical of these uh, Japanese market goods that were made in China for them for the tea ceremony. Nice looking piece of Kosomitsuki. And uh, it went reasonably, $350 with a box. All right, and some people love those boxes. Even if they didn't start out life with the piece, they still like the boxes. It's kind of funny. Don't let boxes convince you something is old. They, 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 the the Jap Japanese sellers have Chinese stuff. are more than happy to put a box with anything you want to buy, and it'll have lettering on it, too, if you want that. All right, now on to this, this clobbered Kang Shi period rose water bottle. There were two nice pieces of clobberware, particularly in the sale in the, in, the, in the newsletter this week. One of them was this, the rose water bottle. I like this. I like the underground, uh, underglazed blue cobalt here. I thought the gilding was quite nice, and I didn't think they went too overboard with the, with the clobbering. So it, it worked out, I think, quite well. Here's the bottom of it. That's what the base of one of these should look like with that sort of cone shape going up inside. <clears throat> Very typical on these. Here's a nice side shot of the foot. Again, they, they, they took advantage of the spacing and added the green and the, all this and then had the cobalt area. And uh, in the end, this did fine. It brought $622. And it's funny, these bottles have been bringing five to $700 for the last 20 years. They never seem to go up and they never seem to go down. I don't know why. It's a very consistent price. Um, and then there was this, the Femil Rose uh, uh, platter. I thought this was a nice piece, Qinlong period. Uh, nice looking enamels on it. Um, there was even an old, they have it dated as Young Chen. I'm not so sure. It could be Chin Lung. Had a hairline in it, but I like the old rotten labels on the back of it. Um, uh, let's see here. It could be late Young Chen, late Young Chen, early Chin Lung, somewhere in there, but it's an old one. And uh, ended up going for $90 because it had a hairline in it. So somebody got a good buy. And uh, whoever was selling it, they have pretty, fa fa pretty favorable shipping rates. 22 pounds to ship that from there to here, to the, to, to the Boston area, from, from, um, um, from uh, where was this, in uh, Walsey? Okay, Walsey in the United Kingdom. All right, this is a seller called New Dynasty, and uh, that's interesting. And then also there was this, this uh, the, we talked about this a good bit, because this is an interesting piece of uh, made up, uh, uh, mi a, ma a magnifying glass made out of a very nice old jade belt hook. And then a nice jade bracelet with double dragons on the top. I, I think you all remember. Um, there it is, the two dragons feuding over the pearl. And uh, this was up to, uh, I don't know, $1,800, $1,900 last week. And I, we all thought it would do a bit more. And it did. It jumped up. I thought it would go to 3500 or so. It went a bit, even a bit more. It went for 4600 did very well. But it was a nice package, nice-looking mutton-fat jade. And uh, you had two nicely carved pieces of jade incorporated into it. And it looked like a pretty decent magnifying glass lens. So uh, uh, 
good on whoever bought that. All right, and then here's the other piece of cobbleware, one of these uh, twisted double spout Kangxi pieces. These were typically done in just blue and white, and when they got to Europe, they were often clobbered. They liked clobbering these, and whoever did this really clobbered it. I mean, there's, there's, this would have had a, a, a white ground and underglazed blue, and that was it. And uh, there's no white ground left anywhere on this. They filled it in completely, and, and but leaving the, the underglazed blue uh, pushing through everywhere. It looked very, very nice. Here's a good detailed shot of it. Might have been a little repair up in here or something. But at any rate, it did fine in the end. It brought $675. All right, I think maybe a little repair in the mouth slowed it down a little bit in the uh, bid process. And then on um, what's coming up this week, I got some things closing. And uh, you want to check it out. This will be on the newsletter page over on bidamount.com. This is the, the thing you can sign up and get notified when we update the page. It's a free update thing. And uh, uh, these are things that we find on Catawiki on eBay and on eBay each week, and we share them with everybody. These are things that we've looked at and picked out. Uh, it's sort of a, a mini mini version of the global member pages where we also go through and those, all those things we handpick as well. So this is a smaller version, and we include just Catawiki and uh, eBay things. And this is something we actually have up for sale, so I'm doing a little sh shameless self-promotion here. Nice looking kind of cheap pot. This thing had been lamped once upon a time, and uh, somebody de-lamped it, but the, I, think the, I think the palm trees on the back are beautifully done. I like the red clouds going all the way around it. Uh, here it is. There's six or eight women on here and a bunch of kids. And one of the kids is dressed up in a Fu Lion outfit, which I thought was pretty interesting. Uh, so we, there he is. He's inside. He's sort of under the Fu Lion. This is the costume. You can see their legs. And they're having some sort of a festival. I thought that was fun. And overglazed blue enamels. And uh, it's up to $1,100. It's got a ways to go yet, I think. But it's a nice example. And it's about 13 and a half inches tall. So uh, if you, if you want to buy that, I'd be happy to have you as a customer. All right. Now over to uh, this, the, the uh, Chinese export early 18th century gilded uh, teapot. This is a very pretty teapot. Very elegant. Very federal period for the American you know, the, the, Ameri the old federal period houses um, uh, with, with, with the long, sleek furniture um, ha would have these types of tea sets on them with strap handles, lots of gilding, very, very much in the, in the taste of federal architecture in the United States. They also shipped, shipped them to England at the same time, too. But I always think of these as sort of an American thing. I don't know why. Uh, the sellers, I haven't checked where the seller is. He's probably in the UK. But you see these in early, uh, early New England houses and so forth. And it does have a, a line through it here and here, but uh, just a, a beautiful example and type. If you see these in perfect shape, grab them. And look at the handles. The handles are elegant. The handles are just so well done on here. Sometimes the handles are sort of smooshed together, and, and they're not that well defined. The handles on this were particularly well defined. And uh, it's up to, uh, what, just $73. It's got 16 bids, closes on Sunday. And I bet somebody could pick that up for under 150 bucks because of that hairline and get a really fine piece of export porcelain. This is Migulary has that up. And then over to this, the Nonia Straits, Femiel June, uh, uh, Nonia Straits uh, uh, Beaker Vase. Uh, nice looking thing, nice yellow ground with these uh, little floral elements around it. And then a big green dragon running around the center. Uh, on the midsection, there it is, and there's the pearl that they're all, the dragons are chasing. Here it is, the dragon is coiling and coming back for it. You must have missed it. And there's a picture of the bottom. All right, and this is up to forty-two dollars. Closes on Sunday. Should do six to eight hundred dollars. Uh, we'll see how it does at the end. It may, and people may be missing it or not paying any attention to it because they think it's uh, a later example. It's not. That's that to me looks like a Ching bot, a Ching vase. And then over here, another very nice-looking export piece. A lot of exports turning up on the market, if you may have noticed, um, is this, this uh, 1770s, 1780s export pot that was originally had a lot of gilt on it. That handle was all gilded, and the spout was all gilded. And you can see from use, it's, some of it's worn off. I mean, this teapot's been used. That, this is the wear of a teapot that's been, uh, that's been loved and used a lot. And it still has a little peach on top, though, which is nice. And... Uh, Here's a back shot of it. There's another side of it, the, the, the figures on the terrace. And uh, it's up to just uh, $461. Probably has another $100, $150 to go before it's over. All right. And on this form of pot, I wanted to mention something. Keep your eyes open um, out there. Every once in a while, you'll come across one of these that's enormous, where it's a foot long from, 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 from spout to handle. They're very, very big, big. 
um, grab them if you see them. I, I had one years ago that came out of a collection in Newton, Massachusetts, and it got a lot, brought a lot of money because it held like a gallon of tea. And only very wealthy people had those, so they didn't make that many of them, all right, because nobody could afford to, to, to cook up, you know, two quarts worth of tea. It was a real luxury. Anyway, the, it was an enormous teapot, and they were done in this form, this particular shape. So, uh, uh, you know, just keep your eyes peeled for that. Uh, and then on to this, this is the last thing, is this beautiful silver and uh, filigree uh, enameled uh, breeze fan. Beautifully done. I love the, uh, the enamel work is very, very fine on it. Take the time to look at it. Uh, they shaded the green a bit here and there, and the blue is shaded in nicely. And the blue is very electric. It really stands out against the uh, piece. Here, here are the, the ends of the blades with these little flowers up on, on the little, little stems. Just a nice looking fan. All the way around. One of the one of the ribbons. They, they, one of the things. The way they, they hold these together is they string ribbons um, through the section so that when you open it up, it just doesn't fall apart. And uh, on this end, it looks like one of the ribbons is broken off because these look like the original ribbons, which is quite unusual. Often these uh, fans, by the time they turn up on, on the market, they've been you know they've been they've been around around the world for 100, 150 you know years or longer, and those ribbons are worn out and they often are replaced. Uh, don't ever not buy one because the ribbons have been replaced because that's, that's perfectly normal. Uh, but these look like the original ribbons, which makes it pretty interesting. And uh, right now, this is up to $534. Ought to go another $500 pretty easily and uh, very, very attractive. And that's about it for the week. If you enjoyed the videos, please subscribe. Hit the little subscribe button down below if you haven't done so already. And the notification bell so you, you know when we've added a new video. We do at least one a week. And uh, subscribe over on Bitamount. Uh, 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 dot uh, com uh, for the newsletter page and also check out the uh, Bitamot Live page. We had a number of sales this week I noticed. It's all little, we get a little sales track that comes through and shows sales and there were, there, were, there were a number of good sales this week for some of the sellers so I'm glad for you a number of Phil Mill Rose things sold um, and I'll say the same thing to our own sellers you know uh, if, you, if something doesn't sell for a while you know the, the, esti the estimate and the, and the price thing um, uh, soften up maybe soften up your price a little bit all right, but especially at Katawiki, I'm going to say it again. I hate to pick on them, but um, your estimates and reserves are just gotten are getting a little bit silly over there. You shouldn't have you know 50% buy-ins. The uh, market's changing a little bit, and uh, more common everyday wares, and I mean things that are under twenty thousand um, dollars, aren't going to get hard pushes at the end the way they might have five or ten years ago. All right, there's still a big market for them. But uh, don't get overly aggressive. Turn your money over. Go buy something else and turn that money over. And as a dealer, you'll make more money in the long run, and you'll help people build better collections, and you'll build more customers. All right? Think about it that way. All right. Have a great Fourth of July, everybody. Have a good time. Be safe. Say hello to your family. Get in touch with people. Uh, have a nice cookout. Uh, and uh, enjoy, the, enjoy the holiday. All right? And we'll see you all next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.